Are we getting, are we stabilized here? Good. When this old world starts getting me down and people do something that I just can't remember up on the roof. Coo! Want to say hi to the internet? I don't know if they can see you, but that's my anthem. Oh, God. He said, oh, Koa. Can the internet see you? Oh, Mr. Koa. Sunshine. Sunshine. We are all out on this beautiful day. We are not up on a roof, but I wanted to get uh, up here today just to talk to you a little bit about something kind of controversial. But before that, I just want to ask if you have not subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? I don't get it. Drop down, hit that subscribe button, and let's stay connected. This is a spiritual channel in which we talk about things like frequency, vibration, manifestation, miracles, shifting your life. It's all good, and I'd love to stay connected with you. To that end, I also want to thank all my supporters, all my subscribers, all my friends, all my patrons, you guys, ET Phone Home, I love you very much. I also want you guys to know that at the end of this month, I have a class called Channeling Angels, two-day online workshop. Love to have you there. Link in the description. Check it out. But let's get into talking about some pot, some marijuana, some marijuana. Oh my God, the marijuana. What does Crystal think about the marijuana? Well, I think that marijuana is potentially miraculous. I don't use marijuana, Texas oh, government. <laughs> I live in Texas and we're not progressive here. They don't even allow medicinal marijuana, which I think is shameful. Uh, but I, uh, either way, I don't, I don't take marijuana. I lived in Colorado before this and, oh, you better believe I tried some of the marijuana. I tried the edibles, but see, I'm an old gal. The marijuana that these kids out here are slanging, <laughs> these dispensaries are selling, it's not the same marijuana as I grew up with. No, no, no. I mean, back in my day, you could smoke a joint and it would not be that big of a deal. Now, you smoke a joint and you are tripping balls. Now, you take an edible and it's three days later and you're calling the cops on yourself for somebody to come and help you out of your your crazy, crazy space. It's like acid, really. It's very, very strong. And so I'm, I'm not into it. I don't like feeling out of control of my faculties. However, I will say that there is a use, certainly a shamanic use for marijuana because unlike alcohol, which kind of shuts us down and certainly kind of closes the pineal down, Marijuana expands us. It opens us up and it allows us to access different levels of consciousness. It just does. And so I think there's an application for marijuana. Well, I know there's an application for mar marijuana where you can use it in order to make those connections. It's shamanic. It, that's pretty much what it's supposed to do. And plus, it's supposed to be medicine. And it's a medicine that works. It's a medicine that truly heals. And I believe marijuana is being suppressed. I think big pharma, I'm kind of a conspiracy girl, but I can't say, <sighs> don't get me started. Big pharma and their position on marijuana, they can't uh, patent it. And so of course they would rather that we not have it, I believe. And the government, uh, the federal government trying to make states bow to the will of the federal government is going to become an issue because these states are making a lot of money selling pot. I don't get it. Why doesn't Texas do the same thing? You could make a lot of money. You want to pay for your schools. You want to do all this stuff. You want the infrastructure, although we got a lot of money here in Texas. But if you want even more to do all these things, well, shoot, get some dispensaries up in here and get some marijuana to the people. There's nothing wrong with marijuana. Of course, like any substance, even if it's Doritos, if you find yourself dependent on it or using it over much, well, then we have a problem. Everything in moderation, and that is the way it ought to be. I knew a person who, from the moment she woke up, she was hitting that bong. I could hear it, that bong water slurping in the other room. And all throughout the day, truly dozens of times in one day, she'd be hitting the bong, smoking a joint. 
she'd need that bong, she'd need that weed just to go to sleep. Like it had become so entrenched in her brain, it had become so entrenched in just her habits that she really couldn't live without it. She can't, she can't really even travel because she doesn't know where she's gonna get it when she travels. And so it's really affecting her life and that's not what it's supposed to do. You know, medicine can help us and medicine should help us, but when we become dependent on it and when, when we become so altered that we don't even know we're altered, that we're perpetually high and I don't even know who you actually are or what your personality looks like, well, now that might be a problem and that's not what marijuana's for. I don't think so, I don't mean to be judgmental, but I just don't think we should have substances in our body altering us from how we truly are when we're clear just for the sake of feeling more comfortable being altered. No, I think we have to find ways to be clear, but I think we can use marijuana to expand. I do. I think it is a spiritual plant. I think peyote is a spiritual plant. I think ayahuasca is a spiritual plant. I think DMT sounds really interesting. They say with DMT that when you're ready for it, it'll find you. Well, honey, I'm ready for it. Would you find me? <laughs> I would love to check out DMT um, mescaline. I've never done anything. and It's hard to believe. I'm from Hawaii. That's where pot was born. <laughs> and my father actually grew pot um, when I was a kid and he would actually make me tend his failing pot plants because he never really had God bless you, Dad. I'm always talking smack, but he really never had like the stick to itiveness to like make something work. And it's it's kind of a difficult plant. And but we would be out there tending those plants. The first time I ever smoked weed, I want to say I was in fifth grade. Like that's the way it was on the Big Island of Hawaii. So um, I I think that uh, I don't I don't know where I was actually going with that. I think that these things. Oh, I was saying that that's all I've ever really done is just marijuana. Never tried cocaine. Don't want to. Never tried. Um, anything else. I've been on some, you know, pharmaceutical stuff, uh, but that's it. But I'd really like to try some of these other. Let's go on a, let's go on an ayahuasca tour. Guys, do you want to? I would love that. I would love to go for like a week and just go into one of those huts with those guides and just take ayahuasca. I mean, I'm afraid I'd poop on myself and get all crazy, <laughs> but I'm willing to risk it if you are. I'd love to do that. So that's like definitely boop in my future. Marijuana is good. Marijuana heals. Marijuana opens. Marijuana was meant to be medicinal and shamanic. There's nothing wrong with it. And people who think that it's bad or it's a drug, expand your mind, people. We're not in 1950s. If it's helping people, it's good, and it's helping people. It's curing people of cancer. It's helping alleviate symptoms of illnesses. It's helping people with pain. It's also helping people connect to higher consciousness and energy, and that sounds good to me, and I'm all about it, and I wish Texas would get with the program. Damn, for such a sovereign state, you think we think outside of the box, and you know these good old boys are smoking joints. <laughs> totally, they're out here smoking joints all day long. All right, on that note, that's how I feel about marijuana. Sunny, do you want to say peace out? 